Hey everyone, Kyle once again, <clears throat> and welcome back to another movie review, and and now um, this one I'm, I'm going to review a film that came out this year, and and I, that I really did enjoy, you know, of course from the title you should know, um, I'm not re I'm reviewing the Spongebob movie, Sponge Out of Water. And this is the DVD that I got as a gift for my birthday, you know. And I really do enjoy the film. And it definitely is, uh, is my, my uh, put, put up with my top three favorite films of this year. If, you know. Um, I really do, I really do enjoy it, you know. And the film, now with, uh, I told you, I said, I said this before, you know. I already did a review of the first film, um, the Spongebob movie, you know. I, I already did a review of it, a review of it, go and check that out. Um, and just really quick show. Now, now with the Spongebob, you know, I grew up with the show, you know. So, when I remember when I first, when I first debuted, and it was like in the late or mid in mid-1998, when it came out there, I think I remember it came out in May 1998, and I don't think it was like about six or seven, or six, you know, from the time when it came, the time when it came out, and I've enjoyed the show ever since, you know, and i show you, um, I have all the seasons of Spongebob, um, like the, the first 100, 100 episodes, which is basically, um, like, um, seasons one through five, you know, because I remember, um, season five ends with, uh, these certain episodes, and that's basically it. It's basically, um, seasons one through five in this one big pack, you know, the first 100, 100 episodes, you know. And then you have season six, season seven, and season eight. That's all there is now because of season nine is still going on, you know, because there's still episodes that has not been aired, which I do want to see, but they have I don't know what they are having trouble with uh, releasing these date, releasing these episodes. I don't know what you know, what's wrong, you know. But until then, I have all the episodes of SpongeBob, and I I still really do enjoy the show, you know, because I grew up with the show, you know, and I've enjoyed it over the years, you know. Saw the first film when it came out. Really didn't love it, you know. And I've been looking forward to seeing a second film ever since then, you know. So, and finally we get to this film. The Spongebob movie, Sponge Out of Water. Which I did a couple of, um, trailer, uh, like two videos of two separate trailer reactions for this film, you know. And I was looking, so I was looking forward to seeing it, you know, really was excited, excited for it, you know. And when the film came out and I saw it. Really did enjoy, you know. But after waiting all these years, you know, for a second film, I really did enjoy, you know. And with the second film, um, but we're a little behind the behind, you know, back on when during the making of this, you know, I think this film began in late 2013, and um, but back in um, in uh, during the production, which uh, which they, they started um, working on the film back in um. Start getting started on the film and in, in development, which was in, I believe was in 2012. And of course, I remember in 2012, Ernest Borgnine passed away. You know, in 2012, Ernest Borgnine has been memorable in a lot of films, which I I really did enjoy him in The Poseidon Adventure, John Carpenter's Escape from New York. You know, but he's also memorable, also also well known as um, playing voicing Mermaid Man in the show. You know, which is right here. There he is right there. Ernest Borgnine, along with Tim Conway as Mer Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, you know. It's too bad that, um, he, di he, died, he died in 2012, you know. And, like, when the when this film ends, the very, when all the credits are, when all the credits are gone, you know, the very last uh, thing that says when the film, when the film is done, you know, the very last credit says in the, in the memory of Ernest Borgnine, which I thought was, which I thought was a good, you know, because, you know, he voiced Mermaid Man in the in the show, you know. And since ever since he died, 
later episodes of SpongeBob, there has been no um, showings of, of um, Mermaid Man, you know. So, yeah, which I thought was, you know, was, a sa it was sad, but also... I'm sorry about that. Um, it was a uh, nice um to do the to dedicate this this in, in his memory. You know, he always be remembered vo uh, voicing as um Mermaid Man, evil. You know, um, and even uh, Tim Conway has like a like one of the talking seagulls. You know, he Tim Conway has like a tiny uh, voice role in it. You know, um, and the film uh came out. You know, so uh, by the way, so. Ernest Borgnine, may rest in peace, you know, he'll, I will say that it was dedicated in his, in his memory for voicing, um, Mermaid Man, you know. And the film came out, it uh, got positive reviews, you know, just like, just like the first film got positive reviews, except that this one got, um, on Rotten Tomatoes, this guy has a much more higher rating, like the first film has like a 65 or a 69% on Rotten Tomatoes, the first film has a 78% on Rotten Tomatoes, this one here. But it's like, wow, that's a, that's... 78% percent Rotten Tomatoes, I thought that was pretty good, you know. Although, on IMDb, though, like, the first film I thought was, like, it has a 6.9 or 8, or even a 7.0 on IMDb. Well, after one, the time when, that, so when, the time when this came out, it had, like, a 7.1 on IMDb, but then now it's down to 6.2. I don't think it didn't deserve to drop down to 6.2. I think it should have stayed at 7.1, you know. But that's just me, though. But positive views, yeah. And of course, the film was even nominated for um, for best animated film, you know, at the Nickelodeon's Kids Choice Awards, but it lost to Big Hero Six, you know. Yeah, but and even still, the, the SpongeBob show still continues of to win for best animated cartoon on the Kids Choice Award, you know, which still deserves because I still enjoy the show, you know. Um, and the film made mo a lot more money, in the, a, a lot a lot more money than the first film. The first film worldwide. When it came out, it made 140 million. It was on a budget of 30 on a budget of 30 million, and it was a success. And um, now, when this film came out, um, they, they they estimated how much the film would make over the weekend. They said they gave an estimate of 35 million, but I didn't. Um, what also like um, the the film when the film came out on opening weekend, how much it made? It made 55 million, which I didn't expect the film to make that much money on opening weekend because Maybe because, you know, people, like, kids or will grow up, like, um, up to my age, you know, or any, and even including um, younger ones as well, looking for, I've been looking forward to seeing a, a new Spongebob movie for a long time, you know, and everyone wanted to, wanted to see it, you know. So, after all that, on the opening weekend, it paid off well. Made a, a lot of money, a fi uh, $55 million on opening weekend. Exceeded the, exp the, the, the expectations of making $35 million. And and in the on a especially on a budget of seventy four million, um, it made one hundred six it made one hundred sixty two million in the U S, which was m way more than in the it, the first film made in the U S. And even combined total of the film, this film made how much the film made in the U S, which is way more than the first film made worldwide. You know, and the film and also this film worldwide made three hundred and eleven million, which which, in my prediction, I thought this film would. Um, I knew. I knew. I knew. I knew the film would make much more than the first film, but I I gave it an estimate like the film would make around like at least two hundred around two hundred million something, you know. But I didn't know the film would go and make crossover to three hundred million. So what I was surprised about, and I'm glad it did, you know. Overall, while this waiting all this all this time for a Spider movie, it paid off well, you know. It made it was box office hit, and it was a made much more than the first film, made over three hundred million, you know. And since the film was was a much big success, you know, um, they're already um, they're uh, in the state of making another, another film, you know, another sequel, which I look forward to seeing. But they said that hopefully it doesn't take over another it doesn't take another decade to make, which they said the film was already in development, and hopefully it will we'll see another sequel sooner, you know, not just ten more years, you know. Hopefully it'll be under that, you know. So yeah, and of course also the, when the film came out, you know, it it opened. Um, it was originally supposed to come out in probably in, in late, late 2014, but it got pushed to February uh, 13th of this year, which which is which they switched it, you know, because 
on February 13th, when this film was originally supposed to come out, it was supposed to come out on the same weekend as um, Kingsman, the, Sec the Secret Service, and Fifty Shades of Grey, you know. But, uh, which I think was, it was, I thought was a smart move, because they moved it uh, to a week earlier, on February 6th. Because Fifty Shades of Grey, which I didn't expect that film to make a, a whole lot of money, which that film did not look interesting, you know, solid trailer, did not, it looked lame, you know, looked... I don't know what it was, you know, just, well, I know it was a novel, though, but just looking at the film in itself, you're like, really, that that film made 560, $569 million, and especially an opening weekend, $85 million? A lot of people wanted to see it because probably the expectations are because of the novel or seeing that it's a, an, exo an exotic romance drama, you know? I'm not interested in that, in those kind of films at all, you know? So it was a smart move this film made, the right decision to come out on February 6th. And of course it came out the same weekend as Jupiter Ascending and Seventh Sun. I already did a vlog about how this film uh, crushed those two films, you know, on the, on the title, you know, so you can check out that video. Um, yeah, this film made $55 million and it beat out um, Jupiter, the, the, the mega-budgeted film Jupiter Ascending, which was another huge flop for the Wachowskis, you know. Seven Sun flopped, you know, as well, in the U.S., you know. $95 million budget, and it made like $17 million in the U.S., you know, and it flopped. So those two films flopped. And But and also, this film beat out American Sniper on, which the American Sniper was, was, num was number one for three weekends, and this film beat it out for the number one spot, you know. Which I'm, you know, which I'm glad for the way was that overall this film pay the, the film paid off well making money, you know. And I'm already... 12 minutes in, I'm not talking about the film. Okay. Now, the film is directed, once again, we'll forget it. The film is directed by Paul Tibbet, you know, who was the animated, the animated supervisor. You know, like, every time a Spongebob Sponge episode um, uh, starts, you know, it sh after it shows the name of the title of the episode, it shows more credits, you know. It shows, like, animation supervisor Paul Tibbet, you know. He and he, he directed he directed the film, but um, he directed the animation, the animated stuff for the film, you know, and... For the live action, when they as soon as they get above the surface, you know the live action s scenes, you know when they're above the surface, that stuff is directed by Mike Mitchell. So two directors, you know, one for the direct the animation and the other one to direct the live action stuff, you know. So it opens up, you know, with um, you know, it it, it opens up, um, you know, the the little islands, you know, it, like in in the intro of the of the show, you know, it shows the little island right below Bikini Bottom, you know. So it shows goes goes to that island and Antonio Banderas as Burger Beer the Pirate. You can see him right there. Which Antonio, which I I like Antonio Banderas as an actor, you know, and to see and to see him playing, you know, is starring in, a, in this SpongeBob movie, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, probably like probably didn't like because he's out, he's all goofy and silly, you know. But it's a SpongeBob movie, you know. It's supposed to be goofy. It's supposed to be goofy and silly, you know. And you know, like the human characters, you know, it's supposed to be like goofy and silly like that, you know, like he was, you know. But I can let it go because, well, I would say he gives a much better performance than Expendables Three, you know, which his character would just talk, 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 and wouldn't shut up, you know. Although I did like him. She has some, has some, um, um, although he has some like some good like fire, gunfire, you know, in the third act of the film, though, but. But but just before that, the character just wouldn't, he was just talk, talk and talk, and he wouldn't shut up, you know, and you wanted him to shut up, you know. So I see his his performance in this film better than Expendables 3. And just in general, this film was much more better than Expendables 3, you know. That was that, that was the worst in that, in that trilogy, you know. Um, so he's on the island, he, uh, he's a pirate named Burger Beard. He wants to take this uh, magic um book, you know. And he takes it. He takes it from a skeleton, you know. And of course, when we're when the the skeleton reassembles itself, of course that was CG, of course though. But um, he's like, you know, he's he's like, oh okay, let's go, bare knuckles, come on, you know. And the skeleton just goes and uppercuts him, punches him all the way up, you know, flying out, him flying all the way back into his ship, you know. Is that is that all you got, you know? So then he goes and opens the book, you know. Of course, um, that's really the, the seagulls are playing go fish, you know. It's like one seagull goes scanny threes. I think that's the, the that's the only line uh, sentence that Tim Conway 
voices, you know, because I, cause I recognize the voicing, oh, that's Barn, that's like, is that Barnacle, him voicing as Barnacle Boy, you know? I guess that, that's the only teeny tiny voice role that Tim Conway had, you know? So anyway, um, Burger Beard, he, he opens the book, you know, it tells the story of Spongebob, you know, the Bikini Bottom, him working at the Krusty Krab, Plankton is once again, as at steal another attempt, like, a hunt, like, the most, like, like, 200th time him to steal the secret Krabby Patty formula, you know. He's on a plane, and he, dro he drops up a, a giant jar of tartar sauce, and, and, of course, um, they're, like, in, like, in, like, like the combat military gear up, you know, um, like, Spongebob, you know, has, like, has, like, has, like, a that's made, like, a bottle of ketchup, you know, you know, extra ketchup, extra mustard, and, and hold the mayo, and Patrick's holding the jar of mayo, you know, has the pun to hold the mayo, you know, and this almost has, has a lot of puns and jokes, you know, that obvious, obvious, pu obvious puns and jokes, you know, which a lot of people probably don't think that's not that funny, you know, I do get, I do, I do get the obvious jokes, though, which I normally, well, I can't say every bad pun like that is terrible because you know, it's 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 a SpongeBob movie, you know, I like on the show and it, of course of course they have to do that stuff, kind of stuff though, you know. But I can for this though, since I like the film, I can live with it, you know. Like when they're like the shooting, you know, shooting the ketchup and mustard, you know. Of course, when of course there there, there is one joke, you know, of course that I which I never think is funny at all, you know. Like when the when he runs out of ketchup and mustard and makes that you know every time we try every time we try to squeeze like those ketchup and mustard bottles, like when you run out, it makes that sound like you're you know farting you know, because it makes that sound and Spongebob goes ooh excuse me and they laugh at it. That kind of, that kind of jokes you know fart jokes you know that I, I don't I, I never find funny because I, I hate fart jokes you know, and well. I can deal with this kind of joking better than the fart joke in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the new film. You know, Michelangelo going, uh, the crowding himself in the sewer, in the sewer, and then Michelangelo goes and, uh, up goes and farts in their faces. I hate, hate that fucking movie. And there you go, I, I, I just cursed, you know. Because, because that film pisses, because I, I cursed because, you know, that, that film pisses me off a lot, you know. It does. That's still the worst film of 2014, hands down. And that's a Nick and that's also a Nickelodeon movie. This film should have made the money that the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles should have had, you know. That new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film made four hundred eighty five million and didn't deserve it. That this film should have made that that amount of money that that film should have made, you know. This should have been the highest grossing um Nickelodeon movie, you know. And this is a, and this is and this is the third highest grossing Nickelodeon movie. The, the new Turtles film is the highest grossing one. The second one was another Nickelode another horrible Nickelodeon movie was The Last Airbender, the live action version, which is also based on like old cartoon TV show, which I've never watched because I was never interested in The Last Airbender. But the live action version directed by M Night Shyamalan, or a lot of people like to joke about the title, calling it The Last Fart Bender, except Airbender Fart Bender, which I can take. You know, a lot of people say that. You know. Which I which I still do agree because that film also sucks ass as well, you know. And of course, you no, know, I'm wearing a SpongeBob shirt just 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 so you know, because you could probably see a portion of Patrick's head right there. Here we go. There's the shirt, you know. Which I didn't think I was when I reviewed this film. I didn't think about the shirt, you know. But yeah, this one was is is three times as better as the last Airbender or, or Fartbender, and even twice as even. Five times as better as the new piece of shit t Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. This film should have made should have been the highest grossing Nickelodeon movie, and this should have been the should have made the amount of money that the new Turtles film should have made did make. You know, it was 485 million. That money should have went to this film to make the highest grossing Nickelodeon movie. But that's just me though, because you know, I was so that, that that that's an insult to Turtles fans, you know, especially to me, you know. I'm not sure a lot of people would disagree with me, you know, and. Or, or agree with me, you know. We have agreeers and disagreeers, so. Um, so moving, so moving on from those, those obvious, the obvious pun and pun jokes and that fart joke, which I did not like though, but still I can deal with that joke better than that show, that that movie though. But still, 
the, the show you, and they'll show you more food because, you know, Patrick described said, okay, Planted, so it's a food fight you want, huh? So which literally that's why I have food fights, you know, shooting mustard, ketchup, you know, and then they shoot potatoes, you know, which hit, hits the blades of the plane, turns into French fries, and they, they shoot the plane down and turns into a tank, you know, Planted has, he shoots out a pickle, which, of course, another joke pun, you know, okay, crabs, you're really in a pickle, you know, so he shoots a pickle and turns into small bits of pickles, and then Patrick throws the mayo, you know, the crash, the thing crashes, it blows up, and turns into this, has this giant robot, you know. So it goes in, opponent goes in, quick punch up, bar the door. Chairs the door, got it. Crashes in, has been played, about to take the secret form that's in the safe. It runs out of gas, because he spent every money he had, so he gives, so Patrick, as a Mr. Krabs, you know, once again, gloats about that he lost again. Gives him his last penny, he puts in the safe, which really is, a diversion, the real plankton is in the penny, you know, which that one is a robot. So he goes and take, t it, t it takes the, the formula, you know, by switching with another bottle, and um, him and him and Plank uh, Spongebob and Plankton tug it, tug it, tugging at, you know, taking try to tug a war, you know, until it poops, it vanishes. And Mr. Krabs doesn't believe, doesn't believe uh, Plankton at all. He thinks he still has it, but in this case, he is telling the truth, which Spongebob says he's telling the truth. He didn't take it. He doesn't have it. And then he takes him down and tries to torture him. Like, he puts earmuffs, you know, soundproof earmuffs, until he tells a knock-knock joke, which makes Spongebob laugh, because the laughter is torture to Plankton, which a lot of people probably don't like that laugh, because it's annoying as hell as well. But i watched the show all the years. I'm used to the laugh. I do find the laugh funny, you know. It's a memorable app to a lot of kids, you know. So, but that doesn't work. They 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 try to make Krabby Patties, Krabby Patties because people are want are craving Krabby Patties. You know, even Squirt um, says the words refunds. You know, they open the freezer, all the patties are gone, and then everyone's they go to Plankton thinking he still Trikman still has it, but he doesn't. SpongeBob he blows a big bubble, so for him and Plankton are, are in, they float away because. Because Spongebob knows that he has he's on playing inside because he didn't do it, you know, which he is telling the truth. So then he responded, uh, Mr. Crash thinking that he's on his side. He's like, you were an underpaid son to me. Classic Brown, once again, does a good job as Mr. Krabs, you know. Um, yeah, of course, he says that because, you know, he's still a cheapskate, you know. Um, and then he's like, it'll, without, the, without the formula, it'll be a complete breakdown of social order. And Squidward, Squidward's like, aren't you overreacting? All of a sudden, the scenery changes, and all the people are dressed in different clothes, you know, like spikes and leather, you know, like a riot, right, you know, stuff like that, you know. Welcome to the apocalypse. I hope you like leather, you know. And then, 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 um, it goes back to Burger Beer, which assumes that's the, that's the end of the story, but the sequels don't, don't agree with that. That's not the ending, so they take that, take that one page that says the end with a picture of the Krabby Patty on and toss it into the sea. That sinks into to Bikini Bottom, lands on um, Sandy's Tree Dome. Um, and, if, and everyone starts going crazy. It's because there's no Krabby Patties and no secret formula, you know. Um, so the, the, uh, SpongeBob and Plankton, they had to work together as a, as a team, which Plankton does not like. He even tries to say the word to him because he has never heard the word now. TM, team, he says... What does TM work, you know? So the one the player, they try to get the people to be on their team, but it goes to Patrick, he's beating his face into his own house, you know. And he says he wants to be on someone wants to be on his team and says Patrick Blank says, What is this what does this um idiot bring to us? And he says, Loyalty. And Patrick goes, Hey everyone He's over here, you know. But Spongebob's saying, What are you doing? And he's like because I need cry patties. I'm you know he's hungry and he needs cry patties. You know, <laughs> and he goes guys. Am I still on the team? Um, so they try to go to Sandy's, which she has like different clothing. She goes crazy. Everything's her treat. It's her treat is a mess. You know, try to go to try to get Gary. You know, he's like has his crown. He's like king of snails. You know, they try to run away. He's like, oh, that's right. They're snails. They're slow. You know. Um, so they had to think, figure, figure, figure this out on their own, you know, and, um, when, when, uh, Plankton tries to take the, see if 
that Spongebob has the secret formula inside his head. So he goes inside his brain. Everything is all sweet and cute because that's the inside mind of Spongebob, you know? Um, like, there's, like, everything, like, everything's, like, candy, donuts, waffles, ice cream, and rainbows and everything, you know? And Blink is like, oh, I can't take this much sweetness. It's too cute. It's hurting my eye, you know? So he gets out of there, you know? And they're discussing, you know, there's the, um, singing a song about being a team, about being a team, you know, being a team, you know? And SpongeBob, you know, wish they said that wish they wait, wish they can go back, you know, in time, which says with a time travel machine, and wish they get the idea to make a time traveling machine, you know. So, but without they need an advanced computer, which, which is um, plank, which they need to go to the chump bucket because Plankton's what computer wife Karen, you know, who's a highly advanced computer, so they need her to make this time traveling machine. So they go back in there, free her, you know, which Patrick was standing guard, you know. Trying to get the key, you know, trying to lift in, plant his rolling down, and shows like his long, you no, know, fat tummy, you know. So they get it, they free Karen, and they go to this like this taco place that's like on this hill outside of the town, you know. They build their time traveling machine, they put Karen in, you know. And here's like, plant is there, and if there's anything else you say, say it now. And Plankton admits, you know, it's like, Karen, I'm really. Even though I've never, I never, I've taken you for granted for all these years, but after all this time, I'm glad you're on my team. And it's like, just when, when Karen says, you know, oh, I think that's the sweetest thing you ever said, switches are off. So they, they install, they, they start, they start up the time, time machine, they go, what they said was like four days in the future, where everything is all covered in sand, and Patrick has a white beard, you know. They go back in, they get to like this, um, futuristic, uh, place where, um, um, yeah, there's, like, this future, futuristic place where they meet a dolphin called Bubbles, which, it, which, how the way, you know, which I probably, probably put together thing, how the way he dresses, has a big cape, you know, it's probably, maybe references, like, the Watcher, you know, the Marvel comic book character of the Watcher, you know, but it's because how the way he, the, the way he dresses, you know, but I don't know. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a reference to that though, but that's why I thought though. But I don't think that's not the case though. But Bubbles is a dolphin, a magical dolphin who watches the universe. You know, as he goes to uh to a bath goes to the bathroom. You know, they're supposed to watch the planets. You know, they say Jupiter and Saturn collide. You know, and Bubbles gets mad, starts shooting laser beams from his blowhole. So they get back into the photo booth, time travel machine. You know. So they head back to the par where just before the secret formula disappears, you know, and they grab um, Sojo grabs a bottle. They head back to the to the Krusty Krab, you know, which there's which the the rides, you know, says discussing having a sacrifice to please the gods, you know. So they get back. They show they got the bottle, but it turns out he got the wrong bottle because it was a bottle that some um, Plankton wrote a note that said that as an insult note to Mr. Krabs, you know. So they plan to, well, sorry. Um, um, Plankton and Spongebob argue, think, oh, I wish everyone was never, never on your team, and Spongebob's like, like, mixing trash with, with recycling, He's like, what has happened, you know, I've become, like, one of you, you know, so, we say, wait, the sacrifice that you need to get, that's what they should, so be it, you know. So, they have the plan to sacrifice him, you know, until he says, I smell Krabby Patties, you know. And Mr. Krabs stops the thing from crushing him and says, he's right. And they tear through all the letters, the letter and saying, back to the normal clothes, and Squidward's like, you mean we could have taken these off, you know. So, they follow the smell, like, the, of course, the stuff, like, the joke, you know, like, they follow, like, tra they travel through great distances, like, through the snow, upside down, or, uh, through the where the Titanic is, or on the moon, you know, <laughs> until it comes until it comes up to the surface, you know, and all the people's like, okay, all sick, all second get all secondary characters come with me, you know. So I played the hides and SpongeBob sock, you know, and all the things how they can get there because they won't be able to breathe, you know. Although in certain um, aspects in the episode they were able to breathe, you know. But then uh, Bubbles comes in, you know, so it wants to thank SpongeBob for make him lose his job, you know, so he can go on different things. And he has the ability to make them breathe above above water, so he gives them, help him, gives them, gets them to his mouth, you know. They travel to the surface, he blows them out of the blowhole, and that's where they get... 
this kind of animation, which people, some people didn't like the kind of how they look animated when they're above the surface, you know, which I never minded it, you know, although in the first film they were still traditionally animated when they were, when Spongebob and Patrick were above the surface, you know, when they were, when they met, meet a David Hasselhoff, you know, but this one, this one, they were, um, this kind of animation when they were above the surface, which I didn't mind the look of them when they were on the surface, you know, the different animation, you know. So they like get to the beach, you know, and they see all these different peoples, you know, it's like with talking to a foot, he's like, Maybe this guy looks smart. He's got five heads, you know. And they try to put roll this guy over, pack it to the other thing they put because they think is um a, a beach, um, Harry Porpoise, you know. He even say he tries to explain even say tries to explain until he gets into him saying, Oh, we got you guys, that's not a porpoise which is she was trying to say human, you know. Um then the um they explore more, and then, like, when a kid, they're on this girl's sand castle, it's like, and this boy kicks them, you know, um, Squidward lands on the back of this, uh, woman, you know, because, you know, Squid, uh, he, because, you know, he sees, like, he's, like, slimy, and the woman's like, oh, that feels good, you know. Yeah, that's, that's another game, which I don't care for either, but still. And then as Patrick lands on this kid's uh, ice cream, it's a giant ice cream to him, you know, like, oh, where have you been all my life now? And SpongeBob and Sandy, they're on top of his umbrella, they roll, it's rolling. They send him to the place, the cotton candy stand, you know. Patrick and SpongeBob, you know, they eat all the cotton candy, you know. And then, of course, looks like what Santa says, if you ate all that, you have enough energy to run around the world. Which, which is the thing that they're supposed to run around the world, but they're taking out postcards, you know. Ah, why is this sugar going to wear off? They try to walk across the street, but then they're trying not to get run over by humans on rollerblades and stuff. You know, they run, uh, operate this bicycle. You know, um, and then they see um, Burger Beard, which he has his, which his ship, which is earlier his ship is really also a ship on wheels, and it's also a restaurant, a food truck. You know, and he's he he has he's in, he took the secret, which we know we had, we know he did because he has the magic book. You know. He took the secret formula so he could sell cra so he could sell Krabby Patties, you know. And they say they see him cooking and stuff like see he's into just that formula and he's like, How'd you get here? I banished I I know, I I rewrote the story and it's like, What do you mean rewrote the story, you know? Shows him the book, you know, and he goes and rewrites against saying banish him to Pelican Island, you know. He, which he which he does, you know, and but which um they don't know what to do, but Tola Santa has shows she she still has that big piece of paper that that was that was left in the ocean, you know, and they get a feather and ink which Squidward has squared ink in, and they they rewrite their own story and they become superheroes, which is this, you know, SpongeBob was like um called the um the um the in what was it the invince or the invince the um, what was it a uh, the invinci the the invinci bubble you know the invinci bubble um Patrick called Mr Super Awesomeness um Mr Krabs called Sir Pin Pinch a lot um Sandy called she's a just a a, a giant version of herself but uh, of a squirrel you know who's Gi just just a giant squirrel and called the rodent and and Squidward called Sour Note. <clears throat> So they use the uh, square word as sour no uses because you know his cl every time he plays clarinet he plays badly you know scares away the people you know and Patrick Patrick has power to get ice cream you know control of mind his mind you know of course that's the thing in the trailer it's like goes and eats them it's like maybe we should pick a maybe we should we should pick a better superpower for you Patrick you know and as um, um burger burger beard tries to um write another thing on the page and. Mr. Krabs with shoots out his claws, pins him to the to the ship, you know. But as they try to do hands in the middle, you know, and uh Burger Beard gets away gets away after the book because SpongeBob may put it into a bubble, you know, and it starts flowing away and he chases after it. So then they chase after him in the streets. Um They the the um like with Mr. Krabs has has like jets, has jets of his own, and SpongeBob you know shoots up bubbles to make him go faster, you know. Squidward riding on Sandy, you know, and Burger Beard tries to stop them by throwing an anchor at them, you know. But then they hook it to a big fish to stop his ship, you know. 
Um, or when the Sandy tries to shoot nuts at peanuts at them, and of course she says the another another pun, you know. Ah, oh, nuts! I'm out of nuts, you know. Yeah, I know it's another, another obvious joke, you know, but still live with it, you know. Um. Well, I'm I'm like I said, I'm not the biggest I'm not I'm not a fan of those obvious jokes, but still. Um. Then a uh, uh, Squidward uses a clarinet to burst its bubble. We 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 tries to grab it, falls into on his grill, and, and it burns. You know, and then they they go and fights back. You know, um, um, when the Patrick uses his ice cream powers again, he lures the ice. He goes around and makes the ice cream goes fire back at him. Or on he uses he uses like a a, a gun that has it's loaded with butter, shoots at Mr. Krabs, and he's like, this will make once again, another another bad pun, you know. Once uh, this will make you feel butter, you know. And I was like I said, I know I I, I can deal with these obvious p pun jokes because it's a, it's a silly it's a silly because you know the show because the whole the whole show was silly had stuff like that so I can deal with it you know. So yeah, those obvious I can tell with those obvious bad um, pun jokes you know. So he shoots the gun, shoots butter at him, or um. When he has, when he has, fires all these cannons and all these cannonballs of SpongeBob goes through his like a, uh, you know that that thing where you blow bubbles at, you know, he's like he's like ah, oh, you know, shoots and catches more into bubbles, and then when Patrick uh, bursts one, oh they're beautiful, lands on his face, but someone gets distracted and he gets shot at, and he's like like this, and Patrick's like SpongeBob, Patrick, talk to me buddy, I'm seeing a bright light, all right, is this better? Much better, you know. Um, and I'm thinking that they're thinking that um, he won. Then Plankton comes comes in. She first shows his head. You know, he mocks him. Then it shows that he 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 has powers as well because he also wrote on the page as well. And he's called Plankton. He's like a version of the Hulk, basically. You know, he you knows big green. He's lifting the butt. He's lifting his ship up. You know, and then um and, um. Um, Burger Beard squirts up uh, hot sauce in his eye. Ah, my eye, you know. And he go, he goes, tends to go to run, run away, you know. And um, he he uses SpongeBob to blow more bubbles, cause like a sea of foam, you know. But he but he gets caught, you know. Like he has him up like this, you know. Gives him the formula, kicks him all the way back to the island, and he's stuck in the sand. And they're all happy. They all got the formula. They try to do hands in again, which. Plankton, they, they saw that Plankton has the formula now, but he gives it back to Mr. Krabs, you know. Here you go. And gives him, also gives him the paper that he had, you know. Go ahead, SpongeBob, take us home, you know. And of course, it goes to show that Plankton can be good sometimes. Even there were some times in the episode that he was good, though, but still. He always been memorable as the the funny the funny villain, you know. But still, he shows that he has shown some good things. You know, he has, like... Like when he said to his wife, no, I'm glad I'm on my TM, you know. And gives him the formula and gives him, gives him back the page so they can all go home, you know. So there are some times, you know, they, even during the show, there are times they show the Plankton can be good, though, but still, he's still a diabolical, funny villain, you know. <laughs> of course, originally, Squidward doesn't want to go because he has muscles. He's like, look at me, I'm a god. Which one thing that wasn't um, in the trailer that they, they, didn't sh they, they did not show in this movie... Where Burger Beer throws, you know, those plastic soda rings. It gets caught on Squidward's nose, and he's like, and he gets tingled up, and he's like, "What is this diabolical thing?" You know, that was in the trailer, but that was not in the movie. I'm, I wonder why not. You know, I don't know why that that part right there, where where Burger Beer throws those uh, plastic soda rings, and Squidward gets tangled up in them. I don't know why they didn't, they didn't put that in the movie. I don't know why that that was just in the trailer. You know. Or better yet, you know, in the first teaser, you know, when um, Mr. Krabs, when they go out on the surface, he lands in this bucket of money and then shows um, Slash, you know, one of the guitars for Guns N' Roses. He was in that teaser, but he was not in the movie. He said that um, he, even though he was in the teaser, he he was not in the he he made the final cut in the movie, you know. I mean, the, those those little things were like a couple of seconds, you know, that incident, those two things, you know, there was like a, there were like a couple of seconds, you know, could have added them in the movie, you know. Why it would not it would not have made the movie much more longer. It's not that long of a film. It's like an, it's an hour and a half of a ninety minute movie. You know, 
I think those couple seconds of those two scenes that didn't were not that were in the trailers, but not in the movie. I think they would not have made the film longer. You know, there was like a couple of seconds. You could have those. You could have added them in. You know, you could have. But so they they write they write the paper they write they write the page they go back home, and um, he's like, well, his score is back to being depressed. But SpongeBob said, I let you a little something. Look under your shirt, and he gave him like rock hard abs, you know, a six pack, you know. And he's like, oh, SpongeBob, you are okay in my book, you know. And everything goes back the way it was. They serve Krabby Patties once again. SpongeBob uh, caught, catches Plankton again, and he's like, what? I'm trying to get back the I'm trying to get back to the things the way they were, you know. And then, and then they cuss, you know, everything's, everybody's happy. They're eating Krabby Patties again, once again. And they cuss back to Burger Pier, who's still stuck in the sand on that island. And the seagulls wanted him to give the permission to sing their song, because at the beginning, they wanted to sing the song, the SpongeBob theme, but um, he silenced them because he, he doesn't like singing birds, you know? So he, but, he's, but he says, okay, go ahead and sing. And they sing the SpongeBob song, you know, which always makes me happy, you know. I always like the SpongeBob thing. Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants, you know. And then um, Bubbles comes in, you know, like stop. I do not like that song, you know. And of course, you know, I thought it was kind of a funny thing, you know. Um, Bubbles and the seagulls. It, all of a sudden, it, it turns into an epic rap battle. If you know what that is, you know, it's a thing. It's a. It was a hit on. It's a hit on YouTube, you know. The show is like different characters, you know, doing epic rap battles to each other. Like, for instance, you know, what was it? Um, uh, was it Darth Vader versus uh Hitler? You know, like that. The epic rap battle. The, the the those two go at it. You know, the seagulls and bubbles. You know, they turn they turn into an epic rap battle. You know, which I, which I thought oh, that was funny. You know, even those epic rap battles I, uh, on YouTube, I thought they were okay. You know, I think they were kind of clever in some way. You know. Well, which I thought was was a funny thing. They they took that ending, make it to an epic rap battle between Bubbles and the Seagulls, you know. So then then, then they finish off the song, you know. And um, even when they tell Banderas, they put a frame, you know, at the, at the start of the show, it shows a pi that picture of a pirate frame, you know. They put the frame over Antonio Banderas' in front of him, you know, to make thing for the show, you know. And of course, after all the credits are gone, the last thing shows up is In the Memory of Ernest Borgnine. So yeah. I, I, I enjoy the SpongeBob movie. Sponge Out of Water, I really do enjoy. It's also one of my favorite films of this year, you know, because I was looking forward to it and I enjoyed it, you know. I'm glad that the film was a box office hit. I'm glad I made more money in the first film as a fan of of SpongeBob, you know. Love our love of the favorite favorite characters: SpongeBob, Patrick, Mr. Krabs, Squidward, and Sandy, you know. And I I and I I would, I would agree on this back here by R. C. Samo Fanboy Nation Magazine. Best uh, family film of the year. I'm sure a lot of kids have fun watching Spongebob, you know. Um, such a well, such the ones that, that, like, they were, like, my, that my age when they started watching when it first started and grew up, like, to be my age, I'm sure they had a lot of fun with this stuff as well, you know. I've um, always been, always, always been a big fan of Spongebob, you know. You know, this, all the seasons. I enjoy the first film. Uh, yeah, I do enjoy the first the first film, but I think that's why I enjoy the, for this one more. You know, maybe it's just because you know, like because the fact that um, some things you know, well, of course it was a the whole thing. The whole the memo of the story was they had to take they had, they had to get the secret formula back. You know, which in the first film it was like the same. It's basically the same thing. They go on adventure to retrieve something. You know, in the first film it was only Patrick and SpongeBob to retrieve King Neptune's crown. At this one is the it's Take take it back to the secret form the Krabby Patty secret formula you know so but I still enjoy, I still I still enjoy the movie it's definitely one of my in my top three favorite films of this year you know so yeah, the voice the voice cast once again they do a great job as they did in the show Tom Kenny once again great as SpongeBob um, uh, Mr Lawrence as Plankton, you know, good, once again. Clancy Brown, I always enjoyed him as Mr. Krabs. Um, Richard Bumas says Squidward, great again. Um, Bill Fagerbake, um, Fagerbake, where his last name is pronounced, once again, great as Patrick. Um, um, even, um, uh, was it uh, Carolyn Lawrence, who voiced Sandy, 
of course, that she's also a main character in this. In the first film, she barely said, like, two lines. It was not a main character in the first film, but here she is, She is, you know, being part of the stuff, being part of the adventure, you know. So, but, but even though she was good in the show as well, you know. Um, Antonio, Antonio Banderas, you know. As Burger Beard the Pirate, I know he, I know it was, he, how he, the public people say he was, he was too goofy and too silly, you know. I, 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 I liked him in the film, you know. It was, it, it was a, a good, a good thing in the film, you know, him playing a pirate, you know, him fighting, you know, SpongeBob. I was, before the, before the film came out, I was like, oh, SpongeBob SquarePants and his gang versus Antonio Banderas, you know. I also thought that was kind of, that was like a fun thing that was, that came to me, you know, before the movie came out, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking, ooh, SpongeBob and his friends versus Antonio Banderas, you know. So yeah, and even though even though he was goofy and silly in this film, it looked like he was having fun with it, you know. And Tom Banderas, it looked like he was having fun playing, you know, being in a SpongeBob movie, you know. Um, which I still say he he does a better job here than his role in Expendables Three, you know. Still, and now the even though um it had it was, it was the film was was loaded with those obvious jokes, you know. I'm not the biggest fan of those jokes, though, but I can deal with it because I enjoy the film, you know. But like I said, the fart, that fart joke, you know, with the ketchup mustard thing, you know, ooh, excuse me. Which I can still say that I, I can handle this that kind of joke better than that stupid joke in the new Turtles film. I also say that I think that, I think this film should have been the highest grossing Nickelodeon movie. I think this film this film should have made the money that the Turtles made, you know. The film the the, the the 485 million that the new Ninja Turtles made, that money should have went to this film, you know. I think this is, this, this film is a lot more fun and entertainment and enjoyment, you know, than that Turtles film, piece of shit film, and then also The Last Airbender. Or Fartbender, as a lot of people say, you know. I still do. I still get... I think this film was... Bi and this is the third highest grossing uh, Nickelodeon movie. I think this film should have moved up the top and, you know... Yeah, I still, I still, it's better than it's better than those two films, those two Nickelodeon, those two pieces of shit Nickelodeon films. I still do. I still stand by it. And I ain't take, I ain't taking it back. It's my opinion, you know. I can say whatever I want. Um, and once again, um, um, I'm looking forward to seeing another another movie of it because I'm a big fan of the show. Um, look forward to seeing it. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long for another film to come out. Um, I'm glad the film made a lot more money than the first film because you know I predicted that it was gonna make like two, make two hundred million, two hundred some million, but it didn't. It made three hundred eleven million, which I was impressed by. You know, it made a lot of money over in the opening week at fifty five million. It beat out Jupiter Ascending and Seventh Sun. I'm glad because um if it came on the same weekend as Fifty Shades of Grey, I don't think it would have made that much money. Which I'm glad it moved up to a week earlier. You know, so I think that was the right thing to do. You know. Because also the same weekend, the Kings and the Secret Service made money as well, you know. And also, I really, I also, I like the Kings and the Secret Service. I think um, I'll have to do a review of that sometime, though. I'll put that also on my top ten favorite films of 2015 as well, you know, because I, I had fun with Kings and the Secret Service, so which I'll get to sometime, you know. Um, but the SpongeBob Square, SpongeBob movie, SpongeBob Water. As a fan of the show, you know, grew up loving it. I could say that I, I still I really do enjoy this film, you know. I'm glad I'm glad it um it was a, oh it was a, it was a good it was a good birthday gift for me. I'm still glad because I love SpongeBob, you know, and really got a lot of, uh, uh fun from this, you know, as a fan of the characters, you know, and the show, you know. So that's my review for SpongeBob the movie, Sponge Out of Water. Um, thanks for watching, and take care, and see you in the next uh, movie review. All right. So, see you soon, alright? Bye-bye.